Hi guys, I'm here with vlog 77 um, and I'm kind of like going through the themes as and when I kind of feel driven to do them. You'll know that they're kind of, my blogs are very just naturalistic about what I feel like talking about on the day and I know I've been doing a lot of quite heavy serious subjects so I'm kind of like picking up on other things um, <clears throat> and swinging across from all sorts. So um, this one is um, the battle of weight is what I've called it. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a subject that I think is a huge fawn in the sides of all of us. Uh, guys too, but especially girls and especially young girls because we have kind of that added peer pressure and all around us kind of society and social media just drives us to feel like we need to look and be a certain way. And one of the problems with that is obviously weight is always coming up. You shouldn't be too thin, you shouldn't be too chubby, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so what ends up happening for a lot of us, unless you're like really mentally strong, is you start to question yourself and get anxious, or oh, should I be looking like that, should I be doing that? And that's when problems start to form, girls start getting eating disorders, you start starving yourself or eating binge eating because you're miserable and being bullied. Um, and basically, I think weight is a problem universally for pretty much everyone. If you are one of these, occasionally you'll get a person who will breeze through life that will have a really fast me uh, metabolism and have no problems with weight. Uh, they're amazing, I'm very jealous of them, um, <laughs> and good for them. Um, unfortunately, for the vast majority of us, that isn't the case, um, and it is a constant uh, fawn in the side um, of the posterior, to put it politely. Um, so yeah, battle of weight. Um, so again, you know, I'm talking like I always do kind of from my own experience, but also kind of in a more wider, because I feel like this will definitely, um, you know, be responsive, responsive to a lot of people, because I think most of us have this issue. Um, you know, there'll be some time in our life at some point when we have issues with weight. Um, now, like I said, you know, some of us manage to avoid it. It depends on so many things, the problems with our weight, genetics, life factors, how uh, physically, you know, how much exercise we do, what we eat, do we smoke? Yeah, there's a million trillion things that affect our weight. And I'm not here to sit and do like a boring like um, video like you get from a medical professional about what you should and shouldn't do to maintain weight because we know all that stuff already. We see it all the time on the TV. Um, and that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm talking about here is, um, so from my point of view, being someone who is chronically ill, Weight, it becomes a, a bit of a um, eight-headed monster. It's quite a different thing. Um, so I, the thing with girls, I can't talk so much for boys because I don't have the, obviously I'm not a boy, I don't have the experience or the knowledge of it. And like I've said before, if I don't have experience or knowledge of a particular subject, I'm not going to cover it. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know about it. Um, certainly from a girl's point of view, uh, when you hit your periods and you're going through those nightmare years, and you're hitting your hormones. For most girls, you kind of get a bit podgy, spread out. So I was actually really, really skinny and actually slightly undernourished looking until probably the age of about eight. And then from eight, I could properly spread out and, and got what I call podgy. I don't call it fat, I call it podgy because it's not quite what I deem to be fat. And I know a lot of people get upset with certain terms and whatnot, but you know, a, a word is, check the definition if a certain word is fine. Um, and for me, you know, the podginess was coming because I was spreading because of my hormones. There was absolutely nothing I could do about it. And I think that's one of the worst time in your life as a girl because you want to look good, you're aware of peers, you've got pressure on you, um, and yet there's not a lot you can do if you're spreading because you're hitting your hormones. And, you know, I suppose it wasn't so bad because I could see a lot of my other friends were going through the same thing. Some of them weren't. Some of them stayed the same kind of size that they've always been. Um, but it was a really tricky time to kind of navigate and figure it all out. Um, and then I kind of stayed quite podgy through my all teens because obviously, so for me, um, because I had PCOS and obviously I didn't know at the time because I wasn't diagnosed until my twenties with PCOS and PCOS is one of the worst nightmare conditions when it comes to weight. Um, because what a lot of people don't realize is that any condition that is interfering with hormones right across your body is going to interfere with your weight. Um, and there's, I mean, I'm obviously talking about from the aspect of the conditions I have and know about, but there's a huge wide variety. So when I talk about the kind of the general range of chronic and invisible illnesses, so for example, take Selena Gomez, she has lupus. 
um, she, bless her, had to have um, one of her kidneys removed because of complications of lupus a number of years ago. And recently in the news, loads of people have been bad-mouthing her because of how chunky she looks, which I think is absolutely disgusting because she's having to be on medication to control certain symptoms. And unfortunately, those medications make her swell. That includes something called looking moon-faced, um, which I've had in the past, it comes and goes, which is when you look very round-faced um, because of the hormone mix up and the medicines and stuff like that um and it's just cruel and nasty and typical in my opinion of our society and kind of the toxic environment that we formed on social media that they would have a go at her like that but what i love about selena gomez is that she fights back and she did an interview and she explained about what how serious and what happened to her and that she would rather be on a medication and look a bit podgy um than um be unwell and look thinner for the sake of fans and people saying that oh you look lovely and thin um and it's this balance and it's really difficult because things really get inside your head um but i totally get it and good for her like seriously good on her um for standing up for that and setting people straight because there are just so many ignorant people out there who think they have the right to comment on everything online um especially when it comes to a person's weight and see i'm really when it comes to a person's weight i never make a comment about anyone else other than myself because I don't know and you shouldn't either because you don't know what that person is going through you don't know why they so you know like when you get see someone really big and in your head you might think oh god bloody hell they need to lose some weight um but it's none of your business first of all and second of all you don't know the reason why they're like that um and they could have a really nasty complicated depressing life going on with all sorts of different health problems like i've had recently um and trust me learning to balance your weight is a fine art and it's really tricky and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't um so so yeah so you know just again like i've said before it's about respect and pausing and just don't come to a conclusion you know like when you see someone seriously skinny you're like oh my god they must have an eating disorder you know not your life, not your concern, none of your business. Um, and yeah, I think sometimes we just in our society get too nosy. Um, you know, we can choose to share what we want to share, but there's also a personal limit and privacy that I, I feel should be respected on that. Um, but yeah, so so sorry, I went off piece with the Selena, Selena Gomez thing. Um, but yeah, so definitely, so teens really hard for girls when you're getting your period and you swap, you ballooned out a little bit and it's a bit hard. Um, and then kind of for some girls you can kind of get back after your teens to where you were before um, other girls struggle um, obviously hormones give you cravings especially for sugar which is a nightmare now with my PCOS PCOS as I said is an absolute fucking nightmare with weight um, unless you're kind of trying to control it so you're on a pill or something that helps to control it it does constantly it's like a little voice in your head eat sugar eat sugar eat sugar I need sugar and um, because I remember through those years, I mean, I'm still tired all the time as part of what I have, I'm always fatigued, but those years in particular, I was so drained that if I didn't eat sugar regularly, I, I completely, I had, I couldn't, I'd burn out, I, you know, I couldn't go to school, I couldn't do anything, so I was snacking on shit a lot of the time, um, so I was a lot chunkier than I should have been, um, and I was aware of that, but at the time, because I hadn't been diagnosed and I was getting no support from doctors, it, and I was in too much pain and I was bleeding all the time, so I couldn't be physically active, um, because as anyone knows with PCOS or endometriosis, you have a tendency when you get the pain to recoil and keep very still and don't move, and the problem with that is that it has the opposite effect, because actually if you force yourself to be more physically active, it actually helps over time to alleviate your symptoms, but it's getting into that mental mindset that I've talked about before, of being able to force yourself through the pain and actually saying, actually, you know what, I'm not listening to the pain, I need to go for a walk, I need to move, I need to get up off this sofa, um, otherwise you're just going to get fat, you're going to get chunkier and chunkier and you're going to make the problem a whole heap worse, um, and that's just the truth of it. Now, luckily for me, my mum is a very hard character, I've always been a very hard character, and because of what I had to go through, and still go through, I have become very mentally resilient, so it doesn't mean I don't have really bad days, you'll know that, because in some of my past blogs I've been crying here, um, I have really shit days, times when I feel really low, times when I feel like, you know, I can't take it anymore, everyone has that, and that's acceptable, and it's okay to realise and recognise that, but it's having that underlying grit and, of knowing no, I will get up and I will work out, I will get up and do that, even if, you know, I'm sore, I've been bleeding or whatever else. 
Now for me, the changing point was obviously when I got on to treatment finally and therefore I wasn't having periods because I just couldn't keep going on having periods because they were making me so ill and so low in iron that I was just sick. I was critically sick. It was not working. And it was only once I actually stopped doing that really that I could start getting more physical again and outside like I wanted to be. Um, and therefore I could start trying to gain control back a little bit on my weight. Um, and I realised I was eating far too much crap and that kind of had to change and all of that. And then obviously very shortly after realising that I was hit with the swine flu. Um, and then obviously that was like a huge shift in everything because suddenly I had been critically ill, I'd almost died and I was losing weight drastically and I went from being quite chubby to actually you could see all my ribs and <laughs> I looked slim and I didn't mind that, I actually loved the fact that I looked slim, what I didn't obviously like was the fact that I was starving hungry, that I was verging on having to be given a feeding tube, that I was having to get water for a drip that I was hallucinating about food in the hospital because I could eat so little, um, it wasn't pleasant. So, you know, when I see people who have eating disorders, I really feel for them because although I've not had an eating disorder, I know exactly what it feels like to be starving and yet unable to kind of cope with the eating mechanism. Um, and it's really disruptive mentally, but also physically, and it just makes you feel very, very lost um, and, and you just don't know how to feel about anything. Um, so... Yeah, so it wasn't good, so my weight was really drastically swinging, and then I'd obviously lost a lot of weight, and I think at my lowest point, I was about 44, 43 and a half kilograms, I don't know what that is in stone, so you'd have to work that out, but it was far under what someone from my height and size should have been. Now, obviously that passed, symptoms improved, I was able to gain weight again, the sickness improved, obviously as you'll know if you've been following my blogs, I still have chronic health problems caused by the swine flu that I'm probably going to have lifelong, because they're still with me at the age of 28 and haven't gone. Um, and someone actually said to me today, oh, actually, you're kind of lucky because the daily vomiting that you get or every other day is actually probably controlling your weight. And I was thinking, that is such a, a silly comment to make because I'm not lucky. I would rather be able to eat food when I want to eat it and enjoy it without being worried about being sick straight after a meal. I can't tell you how miserable that is, especially when you're a foodie and you want to enjoy stuff, you just lose the interest in it. Um, so no, that is not the case. Um, but actually for me, basically, probably maybe six, five years ago, I actually just said, actually, I'm going to take charge of this shit. Um, because, you know, I was doing modelling, trying to get into acting, still am trying to get into acting, and I realised, look, I have got to get a grasp on my weight, not for the purposes of social media and for people to make comments about how thin or how chunky I look, but for me personally, to feel like I'm in control, to feel like I'm strong, to be happy with how I look. Um, now, I knew with my PCOS that it was, this was always going to be a struggle, and it will be a struggle for the rest of my life, um, and, you know, if I ever try to be pregnant, I know the likelihood is that I'll swell and get massive, and then after the pregnancy I'll have to spend ages and ages working on getting back to my original shape, um, and that's a lot harder when you have PCOS, and I think a lot of people that don't have the condition just don't realise actually what a nightmare it is when you have this condition. There are other conditions as well that's similar, but obviously I'm using this as an example because this is what I have to live with daily. Um, and so, yeah, so I kind of took charge of the amount that I was eating and getting really strict with myself so that I was eating what I knew I needed nutritionally um, and also allowing myself a treat because I've always been, and I'm a firm believer and I stick with this, you shouldn't deny yourself a treat um, because what happens if you deny yourself a treat is that over time um, you just build, it builds up and up and then you end up having a day when you binge loads of crap and that's really unhealthy um, and I went through that phase and I learned about it and what I should and shouldn't do um, but whether it's if you just allow yourself, you know, if I say to myself, okay, one sweet thing a day, that equals one slice of cake or one bar of chocolate, but that is it, that is your treat eat it slowly, savour it and enjoy it and that's fine. Um, now what's interesting is when I see people now from school, a lot of people are like, wow you look so much thinner and other people don't really notice and people that I meet sometimes are like, oh no you look quite normal, other people are like, oh you actually do look chunky. Now I would describe myself right now as being curvy but not chunky, so if you, my actual, if we're going from a medical point of view, my weight is um, 62 kilograms which for someone of my height is bang on, perfect, it's not underweight, it's not overweight, it's in that like healthy green zone. So if anyone says to me, and I've had people in the industry from modeling say, oh, 
you know, you're, you're chunking your podgy, I always correct and say, actually, I'm not. I'm bang on. It's just you that wants someone like way, way thinner. I am the right size that I should be. This is how I should look. Um, but there's a very fine line. And like I said, with PCOS, it's really difficult because you go through phases where your hormones take over and there's nothing you can do about it. And you will find that you swell a bit or bloat a bit and you look that little bit chunkier. And then you'll find you go through a phase when you look slimmer. And it is horrible because it takes the control away from you. But it's the condition. I wish it wasn't there, but it is. Um, but at least the one thing I can do to make myself feel in control or that that just that much bit more in control is by kind of keeping in charge of what I'm eating and exercise. Exercise is key. I know people jabber on about it all the time. Um, but for me, it's weird because I now think I've got into a situation that might potentially become a bit of a problem. Um, because I set myself, so I was working myself up, I'd started with two workouts a week, then I went to three workouts a week to four, so where I am now at is that I try to do four workouts a week, around 40 to 50 minutes per workout, um, so you know, that means I get well within my quota for what a healthy adult should have, and I generally believe that that, with a combination of doing planks and um, strength work on my abs, means that actually, you, you know, I'm trusted at the moment, but I'm actually quite toned on my arms and my stomach, and that's just down to hard work and tenacity, and I'm really proud of that. Um, that I've been able to do that despite being really ill uh, with lots of cro chronic problems, and a lot of people just wouldn't have, um, the, you know, the stubbornness to be able to do that, they would give in after a while, it's getting that mental grit to do that. Now, like I said, there are some days when I can't, when I'm too unwell, or I've not slept at all, or I'm really depressed and I don't feel like it, and that's acceptable, there's no point beating yourself up about that, but as long as I then get swim back into a routine as fast as I can, then that's okay. But on the whole, I always try to do four workouts a week. Even when I'm not feeling well, I still push myself to do four, unless I'm really unwell or I've got a virus or, you know, I just really can't. Um, <clears throat> because for me now, doing those four workouts a week makes me feel slightly more in control. It's like a structure, you know, it's a plan, it's a coping mechanism. Um, so, but the problem with that is I feel like I've now become too reliant on it because when I'm in situations when I can't achieve my quota, um, I am getting frustrated and I am feeling unhappy with myself and how I look and that's not good but the main thing is that I'm aware of that now before anything kind of starts getting too bad um, what I don't want to happen is become one of those crazy people that ends up like working out all the time and that's really unhealthy and then you get faint and ill um, and all of that um, but I'm pretty certain that I have the mindset to be able to avoid that um, but what I'm trying to say here is that you know it is, I know people jabber on about it, but it is really important. You cannot replace exercise. I know a lot of people, I know all sorts of people, some who are into it, some who aren't, some who just don't try hard enough. But, you know, we are human beings. We were designed as hunters to run around um, and hunt animals. You need to be active. If you don't use your body, it's not good for any part of your body. Even if you don't have chronic health conditions or PCOS, you should still be active. Um, but obviously, from my point of view, I'm talking about as a chronically ill person, it is that much more important to try to keep reins on your weight. Um, now, especially the consequences with gynae conditions like PCOS and endometriosis is that um, you'll actually find that the chunkier you are, especially if you are overweight, it causes all sorts of problems with your menstruation and your periods. Um, and you'll often hear doctors say, you know, if they get a girl in who's very overweight and she's been talking about period problems, they'll say you need to lose weight um, because it does impact on your fertility and when you ovulate and stuff like that. Um, that's also why they often say to girls who are trying to get pregnant, always try to lose weight. Um, it's exactly the same theory. But that theory is also the same for PCOS and endometriosis because these conditions are so closely entwined with your weight. Um, and I have absolutely seen a correlation that when I've been chunkier, the symptoms have been worse. And when I've been managing to maintain the slimmer side, the symptoms are still there, but they're improved. And that's why for a number of years now, I've forced myself to maintain that. Um, and, you know, I cannot stress enough how hard that is because there are some days where my hormones... Um, because PCOS is very closely linked with insulin, and that's why diabetes is a risk factor with PCOS. And that's always at the back of my mind, which is really anxious and worrying me. Um, so when I get the days when it's like sugar craving, sugar, you need sugar, you need sugar. It's like trying to resist it, but at the same time, sometimes you just, you can't resist it. It's like, it's not even just a voice in your head. It's like your whole body, like, I really need sugar, you need to give it to me. And it's so frustrating because in my head, I don't want it, but my body is asking for it. 
Um, so, you know, if you're a girl out there with PCOS and you weren't aware of this and you're getting sugar cravings all the time, don't worry, it is normal, but you do need to try to get a rein of it, otherwise you're at risk of spiralling out of control with your weight, which is going to make your symptoms in turn worse, um, and then obviously the consequence of that, more serious implications of getting diabetes and other things long term. Um, and I just think also, with the whole weight thing, it's like such a huge scary monster thing but if you can get some kind of structure and coping mechanism with it and you can stay in that realm um it's a lot easier to maintain rather than ever letting it kind of go out of the cage so to speak um trying to suppress it and just keep it in control um so for me so yeah for me and my body shape so i was always kind of brought up to love yourself um and on the whole i've always been fairly happy with how i've looked obviously because i'm confident enough to do modeling and acting but that doesn't mean that i don't have days when you know there are things about me that i don't like how i look that i would love to change i think most girls have that which isn't helped by pressure from society i really don't like my chin that uh, what really bugs me is even though i've lost weight and seen feel and look slimmer everywhere else my chin looks really chunky so like when i'm doing self tapes and auditions i'm always doing this <laughs> because i don't want to do this because it gives me a double chin and I hate it. Um, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it because I've tried. Um, and for whatever reason, maybe because of the medication that I'm on my PCOS, this stays quite round. Um, so, but then I kind of remind myself, well, look, I know I'm pretty. I know I've got talent. Um, so I just have to get over this thing about my chin um, and looking tired under my eyes and, and, and stuff like that. Because, it, you know you would be an amazing person if you thought you were perfect and had no issues. I don't think I've ever met anyone who is happy with every aspect of their body or how they look. Um, but I think there's kind of a certain level of acceptance that you need to get with that. Um, and that's tricky. But for me, you know, toning up and trying to do muscle work so that when I looked in the mirror, my tummy looked a bit nicer. That was a big thing for me personally. Nothing to do with anyone else. Not even my partner. You know, my partner commented and said, oh, yeah, you look great. But for me, it was just about me. It was just about saying, yeah, you know, I can see evidence now of the hard work that I've been putting in that there, you know, that it proves that I'm trying um, and that I'm managing to kind of um, win, so to speak, against PCOS or at least keep it suppressed. But kind of the problem with that is what is at the back of my mind is when I'm having good runs is I always know that at some point my PCOS is going to come up and bite my ass and kind of pull me back down and make it really hard. And... I think that's kind of the battle of PCOS, so I would kind of describe it as. That is one of the biggest battles, is always fighting with it with your weight and what you're eating and trying to get the right balance. Um, and sort of knowing down the line that, you know, if you want to go through the, the stress and the hassle of trying to get pregnant, um, that you are inevitably going to have problems with your weight. And that, that might mean that afterwards you're going to have to start from scratch all over again. And it's like, do you really have the mental drive to deal with that and do that you know I don't know um because I just don't think that people realize just how hard it is you know for someone normal and healthy who loses some weight and like oh yeah I lost some weight lovely lovely for someone with PCOS just losing a little bit of weight is a huge huge achievement because PCOS makes it so tough to lose weight so for someone who can lose a certain amount of weight in two weeks for someone with PCOS it will take them three or five months to lose that same amount of weight um, it's not an easy game at all and also important to say at this stage that it's very very different for everyone so like I've said before conditions are on the spectrum when they're chronically ill and you know you can get girls with PCOS that's very um, the symptoms are weak in fact some girls don't even know they have it and then you can get very severe symptoms um, and so therefore you know, on the whole, I think there is kind of this ideology that if you have PCOS, endometriosis is going to be on the chunky side, which does kind of fit with the symptoms. However, I've met seriously skinny girls with PCOS. Um, so it's not always, there's no fit um, kind of like structure to it or who it does and doesn't affect or what it looks like on someone. That's why it's invisible, why it's so hard to kind of pick up on. Um, but I just think ladies, when it comes to weight, and actually gentlemen too, we need to, before we start kind of battling with other people and what they think of us and how society views us, etc., etc., we need to just take a step back and remind ourselves that the most important thing is about how we feel about ourselves. And that if we're not happy with something, you always have the power to, to try and fight back against the ill health and take some kind of, even if it's just baby steps, even if it's just small things, if it makes that little bit of difference in helping you feel, actually, you know what, today I'm proud of myself because I ate exactly what I was meant to eat and I only stuck to one treat. Um, and I went for a walk. Great. 
you know it doesn't have to be big things even if it just makes you feel better mentally that is a huge benefit to your body um and yeah i suppose you know it's all about becoming mentally uh driven and kind of having that drive so that you don't burn out in fact this goes out back a little bit to when i was talking about do fender award and how you kind of get that grit and determination and inward inspiration to just keep going unfortunately when you have conditions like pcos you have no option but to do that because you know if i suddenly just stop like that controlling what i'm eating and how much i'm eating and what sugary stuff i'm eating and if i suddenly stop working out within a matter of weeks i am going to be gaining weight um and be way way podgier and then i'm going to be miserable and unhappy with how i look and then that's when things can become dangerous because you start thinking about starving yourself or other things which can turn to eating disorders so it's like all sorts of like other stuff so to avoid that you have to keep a really really tight rein on yourself um and don't underestimate it that is not an easy feat i'm not going to sit here like you know you get a lot of people online who are like oh yeah you just eat vegetables and then you get this nutrition and you work out um yeah it don't work that way um <laughs> so um we're all human beings um and obviously with the stress on top of life and whatever's going on it can sometimes just be impossible to do that so you know if my partner once a week gets a takeaway yeah i will treat myself to the takeaway because i don't want to be so harsh on myself that i'm taking away all the small enjoyments that actually make life bearable because when you're chronically ill everything is already so much harder um and you know if i say i'm not going to eat any cake i'm not going to bake anything i'm not going to have any chips now and again why it's not my fault that i'm ill that's not fair i'm not going to be punishing myself and i see that all the time that people's mindset is like they feel like they need to punish themselves in order to gain get where they want to be um and i've tried that in the past and it doesn't work it just makes the problems even more complicated and difficult to sort um you you just have to keep experimenting and trying to find something that actually um works for you a little bit better um and it can take years it took me years i'm still kind of figuring it out i feel like i found a good middle ground but like i said for me there's always that constant little voice that a little anxious at the back about oh well what happens when my pcos decides to turn um, and change because that's not fair because i've worked really hard to be looking like this and i'm happy with how i look now and i don't want that to change again but also for me as a very personal journey you'll know that i'm on as i've discussed before a depot injection which stops me from getting periods but at some point down the line if that starts affecting my bone density i'm going to have to come off it and that for me is such a scary prospect but especially when it comes to my weight because that injection is stopping me from bleeding which means that i'm able to be very physically active now if i have to go back to bleeding i'm just going to be an ill iron deficient girl again and i'm going to gain weight because i'm not going to be able to move around much um so it's it's scary um living with chronic health there is always what if what happens when that happens what when i have to come off that medication do i have something new to go into that um it's like that permanently living with chronic health and that's why it's so tiring um and if you're not chronically ill you just will not understand it but that's why i always say you need to be really sensitive and understanding if you have someone a loved one or someone in your family that's chronically ill because it is just this constant barrage of i need to do this and i need to keep that in check and i'm worried about that and because it's chronic it never goes away so it's not like when someone says oh i've got a really nasty flu and i feel like hell yeah but in a couple of weeks it's going to be gone and you're going to be fine again um it's not like that when you're chronically ill um and so the battle of weight is such a huge problem for someone who's normal and healthy but can you imagine how much harder it is when you're ill um you know and especially when you're on multiple medications and you have multiple conditions like in my case one condition can make the other worse one medication can make another medication worse um some foods it's very tricky so i know people always like go and speak to a nutritionist you know what i really am not a fan of nutritionists and the reason why is they hand you a standard packet of leaflets of stuff that you can find on google um and it's really not very helpful especially when you are, have a very unique case like in my situation because one of my conditions says that i should eat this certain diet right but the other condition says i should eat the opposite diet so what the fuck am i meant to do then <laughs> i can't do do both if one makes one and the other worse and that's that um so i've actually found that i've actually been left feeling like very unsupported especially in terms of my diet and what i shouldn't, shouldn't be eating i've had to just figure it out for myself 
Um, and and sometimes I get ratty with doctors when they say to me, oh, you should eat more of that or that. I'm like, no, actually, don't tell me what I should eat because I eat what my body allows me to eat. Um, there are some things that you want me to eat that I just can't because they just make me sick or there are certain things that I just don't like. I'm not going to sit and pour down spinach juice into my body, um, which, by the way, doesn't help. Um, actually, too much fibre can make certain conditions worse that a lot of people don't realise. And there's, there's a lot of mixed information on social media, like, you need loads of fibre, you need to do this, you need to do that. But what they don't tell you is actually too much of all of that actually makes the problem worse. Um, so, yeah, um, there is no easy, quick answer. Um, I would love to sit here and say to you, right, this is what you should do to help keep your weight in check, um, especially if you're chronically ill and you have this, that and that. Um, but I can't because there is no science to it. Um, it is just a case of learning, trial and error, um, and see what happens. Um, I feel like at the moment I'm in a fairly good place with my weight, but I know that, you know, if I have a really bad cycle and I'm really ill, that I might lose weight or my PCOS might make me gain weight. And that worry is there. And especially because of the industry that I'm in and trying to get into with the acting and modelling, there is that pressure of how I look. Um, and I think that's changed a little bit because now we see more of a variety of actors on TV, chunkier ones, um, which is nice. But at the same time, I still feel very much that they're still very much engraved in that industry, a certain look and a certain size. Um, and you'll know that if you've ever done any ex acting work or extra work, that if your measurements are over a certain measurement, some companies don't even consider you, they don't even look at you. Um, so you do feel very much like you are forced upon yourself to be a certain size. Um, and, you know, that is society doing that and also particular industries doing that. Um, it is a tricky one. Um, I will probably talk about that more in another blog because I feel like I kind of covered that quite kind of like gung ho. Um, but yeah, I it's just I think that our society there are pros and cons for social media and all of that, but there's a lot of toxic problems with it. And I think one of the biggest issues with that, certainly and definitely for the girls anyway, is constantly being bombarded with ads and stuff with all these beautiful women that are slim and skinny. Um, you know, eventually, you can be the hardest person in the world mentally, but eventually when you see all that constantly, it goes into your subconscious and you're left feeling really inadequate. And that makes me really mad because I don't think any of us should feel inadequate. I feel like we, as a human race, one of the lovely things about the human race is that we're all so different and also unique. And I think that's great. And I want to see that reflected more in our actors and the people on TV. There should be a nice big variety in race and colour and, you know, size. And it annoys me that, that there's like, you have to be this way. You have to look this way. Um, and, yeah, it is upsetting and it does get to you. Um, but, like I said, there are things that you can do to try to keep it in check. For me, it was kind of the exercise, forcing myself to do it and reducing myself to one treat a day. Um, and like I said, for the vast majority of the days I manage it, but maybe one day a week, you know, I break the rule um, because I've had a really shit day. And that's okay. Like I said, I think acceptance is a really important thing. You need to learn when to just say to yourself, okay, I didn't do well today, but I'm just going to forget about it and move on rather than like, you know, bottle it all up, get angry with yourself and then binge eat. It don't help. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop there.